ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Gav Mac here and welcome to the Bundesliga Review Show. Not the top five, it's myself, Gav Mac and Alex Osborne. How are you, dude? Very well, thank you very much, sir. How are you? I'm um, very well, thank you. Very, very well. Thank you very much for asking. Now, there's been action this week in the Bundesliga, as there is every week, which is fantastic stuff. But we have to go to one place first because we didn't believe that sort of action will be would be happening at all. It's absolutely crazy stuff. But yeah, as I said, you're watching Two Up Top. Uh, you can follow us on our social media links. They're all going to be down there. Scrolling along the bottom at some point. At Two Up Top Football for everything. We're sponsored by DC Music Services, and we are in affiliation with Macau Sports Bar and Grill, which is soon to be open again on the shores of New York City. Right, Alex, game one. Paderborn one, Borussia Dortmund six. Now, <laughs> at half time, it was nil nil. Did you have any idea that the scoreline would be as vast as this? Uh, no, I mean, maybe before this game started, you would have thought it would be uh, of a similar scoreline as it actually did end up being. But at half time, definitely. Uh, and anybody would say, oh, yeah, I had faith that it was always going to be like that. Then they would be lying to you because Dortmund looked toothless. They didn't look like they had any kind of goal threat at all. And Paderborn uh, kept getting it to, oh, what was his name? Adji? Adeji? Yeah, Ajay. Ajay, that's it. Yeah, who showed a lot of uh, promising running, uh, direct dribbling. But he couldn't finish for Toffee. He, I don't think he hit one. I don't think he hit the target once, and he had about three or four sh diff different attempts at goal uh, during that first half. So going into the break or coming out of the break and into the second half, you're thinking, oh, especially myself, who that was the second Paderborn game I've watched this week. <laughs> Poor bugger. I was <laughs> like, oh no, is it going to be another dull as dishwater nil nil? But no. Um, Ended up being anything but, really, didn't it? Seven goals in the second half. The opener was from Torgan Hazard. Mm -hmm. He was playing through the middle today. It's not the first time he's played through the middle as like a false nine, so to speak. Do you think that he could forge a career later on? In, uh, no, I don't, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I, I mean, I feel like he's a decent pro, but I don't think anything more than that. I don't know if he's if he's quite got the skill set in him to do it on a consistent basis maybe in a relief duty here or there but uh no certainly if if he started that that false nine position over a significant run of games Dortmund would suffer as a result mm. it's weird how Haaland has only been part of the team since January yet they looked so lost without him they did. And I, I don't know what it was. I mean, I'll, I'll happily admit I wasn't a, a regular watcher of Bundesliga football uh, during the first half of the season. Uh, I mean, I would check out games here or there, like the big games and, you know, look at the scores and that without actually watching the games as such. But I can't remember Dortmund struggling really for goals in the first half season. Now, that could be because I think uh, 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 Marco Royce, he hasn't, I don't know what's happened to him. Is he he must have had a serious injury pretty just before the quarantine started or certainly this in this year because he hasn't featured at all has he no uh, since we've come back from the break uh, from the break and he hasn't even been mentioned really either so to me suggests that he has quite a serious injury and but that's something that unfortunately has plagued his career but what well, the reason why I'm mentioning him even though he wasn't a sent forward he was still Dortmund's top goal scorer. He was their main threat. He was the one who carried the the threat for other teams to focus on, which therefore brought other players into play. Little fun fact for you: four years ago today, Germany announced their final twenty three for Euro twenty uh, Euro twenty sixteen, and he was cut mm. from the squad. Four years ago to the day, I don't know what it is with Marco Royce. I I love him. I think he's an absolutely fantastic footballer. I, I do as well. I I, I really thought. He was good, and I remember getting a bit hyped when Arsenal were linked with him quite a, few, uh, a couple of times in the past. And I'm thinking, oh, here we go. This this could be, uh, this could be a player that we could certainly make use of. And I remember signing him on a couple of my FIFA saves as well. Thinking, oh, I'm, I'm I've got a 25, 30 goal player here 
for me. Um, so it's just it's just unfortunate. You should get certain players that just seem to have the injury gene or whatever you want to call it, don't they? Yeah. And they always seem to be quite mercurial players as well. Uh, one player who has come back from a bit of injury is uh, is Jaden Sancho, who decided that he was going to tear it up today and bag himself a hat trick. Mm. The first goal was well, all the goals were taken pretty nicely by him. Um, but there's a little bit of controversy behind the the first goal. He scored it, and as soon as he scored, he's taken his shirt off and he's he's put a, a message on in regards to everything that's been happening over in Germany. The referee booked him, and I think rightfully so. So, I I don't necessarily agree with that. Yes. It's letter of the law. It says that you know you shouldn't you shouldn't take your shirt off because if you take your shirt off, you're booked, right? But with what is happening, what has been happening uh, in the world recently, uh, he wanted to share his message and show support behind the the goings on. I feel like the referee could have used a bit more common sense there because to me, I, this could just be me, but I'd imagine that other people might think this as well. It kind of looks like the referee's booking him for having that opinion rather than taking no, off the shirt. No, dis- I, I 1 million percent disagree with you there because he's removed his shirt. It doesn't matter what it says underneath the shirt, he's removed his shirt. The law states that you cannot remove a garment in celebration. I know he's normally to incite fans or whatever, but that's sort of what we're, we're told is to incite fans, but that's not what the law says. The law says that you cannot remove your shirt. So therefore... The referee has rightfully booked him. You might not have even seen what was written on his shirt. So, as soon as I saw him taking his shirt off, I literally turned around and said, all right, here we go, here's a booking. And I saw the message, I was like, ah, okay. But you still got to get a yellow card. Um, yeah. There was... we, had, we, we had the same conversation, but I don't know, I, I certainly... It's don't a, a, a yellow, card, yellow card is yellow card. That, that's it. Um, <laughs> then Paderborn were given a penalty for a situation which we see happen so often. And the fact that Dortmund were in the same situation last week and a penalty wasn't given, it's Emre Chan has, has turned his back completely before the ball's even been struck and it's hit him in the elbow and, and whilst his arms are quite close into him. Do you think that penalty is harsh? Certainly think it's harsh. Uh, con- as you say, considering that what happened last week to them, the penalty wasn't given. And... If you think about it as well, it was what a max of a yard, two yards between when the ball was struck and hitting it in him, hitting his arm. Mm-hmm. So it was certainly not enough time for him to move his elbow out to to block the shot, which is what really a penalty should be given for, isn't it? Because you're moving your arm out to try and deflect the ball or whatever, stop the ball. Whereas as he last week, there was a what about a a good five or six yards between Haaland striking the ball and the ball hitting Boateng. And on the replay, it showed that Boateng moved his arm towards the ball, towards yeah. the line of the ball to, to stop it from going in. So, 100%. yeah, I, I thought I thought it was definitely a harsh penalty and wanted VAR to get involved. It didn't at all, or certainly uh, from my recollection, it wasn't I involved. Don't think it did, yeah. So, yeah. Um, but I don't know what the I don't know what the rules are with VAR. I thought they would check any penalty, but if it's been given, then maybe not. I don't know. It's got to be a blindingly obvious error. It's it, that it, even though I don't think it's a penalty, I think it's damn right harsh. You've got a big job to try and overturn that because at the end of the day, it has struck his arm. I don't agree with it, but it wasn't be a situation where. It would be overturned in that situation. I, I, I don't think so at all. Um, Hakimi also bagged as well. That's his fifth goal of the season. That's nice. And, and Schmelzer, I can't believe he's still there. <laughs> still there? I can't believe he's still alive. Ages, ages he's so play. old. <laughs> I can't believe it. But yeah, that's that, that was that. Dortmund absolutely slapping Paderborn to bits. Uh, and Paderborn, they, as far as I'm concerned, are definitely going down. Yeah, uh, I think Paderborn going down. I think also as well, when you mentioned Haaland before, I, for, they made it sound like his injury is not that serious and he should be back in the side pretty quickly. We'll soon see. We'll soon see. One team who we spoke about on the first show about hopefully being safe was Union Berlin. And they have not had a very good time and they're getting dragged right back into it. 
That's the other game for, from Sunday's games. It was Borussia Mönchengladbach 4, Union Berlin 1. Um, it was Mönchengladbachs all day. And I thought the front two were absolutely fantastic. But before we wax lyrical about player and Turam, I want to talk about Neuhaus. Now, Neuhaus, he scored the opener after 17 minutes, which was quite a nice solo run. He could have probably got a free kick, played on, he was able to use the outside of his peg, hit the inside of the post and, and went in. But only about a minute or two before that, he had an opportunity from his own half where he almost caught the keeper out. And there was a lot of times where the Union Berlin goalkeeper was way off his line and could have got loved a few times. We, well, I was having this discussion with Martin when we were watching the game. We weren't quite impressed with the the goalkeeper. Um, seemed to lose his bearings on that shot you mentioned from uh, Neuhaus's own half. Um, yeah, I, I get it. You know, he... he, he He's, he's saved it, but when you look at the replay, it's going comfortably wide. So he's kind of lost bearings of where he is where in relation to the goal, the pitch and the, the flight of the ball. And then, as you mentioned, for the goal, that was strange. He didn't even make an attempt to try and save it. And it was not as if the ball was travelling at some speed either. No. And it's almost as if he's left it thinking, OK, it's going wide, so I don't need to die for it. And then it's hit the inside of the post and gone in. And you're like, that's strange optics, isn't it? That's yeah. strange optics for a goalkeeper to, to to let a goal in like that and you're not even attempt to try and save it. Mm -hmm. um, player and Toram, they have been brilliant all season and it's games like today where they prove that the, the chemistry between them two, it's like they've known and played with each other for the last 10 years and... You know, player, two assists and a goal. Uh, Turam, he's got himself a brace. What what do you make, Mark, of, of their performance today? Very much similar to their, their first game back after the break. They made a difference in that game and they've made a difference in this game. Um, Marcus Turam, <laughs> he certainly got a lot of promise to him. Uh we were trying to work out what actually his position is. And we would come up with, we were like a scenario in the dressing room. The manager would go, uh, or Marcus Turner would go to his manager. So where do you want me to play, boss? And I go forward and goes, whereabouts? And I go, yes. Yes. Yeah. Final third. <laughs> yeah. Off you go. Do yeah. whatever you want. Just, 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 so do you want me to play left? Yes. yes. Do you want me to play center? Yes. Just, just play forward. And cause he seems to pop up in numerous uh, positions, but, He's getting himself in the right position, as in on the end of crosses, on the end of chances. Whether he scores them or not, that's a different matter. But he's finding himself in the right positions, which can only bode well for him in the future. Because we've seen when strikers get themselves in the right positions, they're going to score their fair share of goals. I love what you said there about finding himself in the right position, because you're right. It doesn't matter where he is in that final third. Third, if he's got the ball at his feet, he knows exactly what to do. He's showing a level of maturity that you would expect from someone who's coming towards the end of their career, not somebody who is pretty much at the at the genesis of his career. And you know what this partnership reminds me of a little bit? It reminds me a little bit of Peter Beardsley and Andy Cole for Newcastle. Mm. So Peter Beardsley is your Alassane player, and Andy Cole was your Marcus Turam a little bit. Whereas Obviously, you could say Andy Cole was your definite number nine striker. Marcus Turam is not quite that. But modern day football, you don't really have too many number nines nowadays. That's right. The way that football was evolved. But it's a very similar way, very similar partnership, isn't it? Because Peter mm. Beersley weighed in with his fair share of goals as well. Yeah. And also, they had a good sort of link-up play, which is very similar in this kind of partnership for uh, Yeah, I completely agree. Um, at 2 0, everything's happy, everyone's cruising. But Union decided to get themselves back into the game, and it's an Anderson header to make it 2 1. But they didn't really threaten today, did they? No, they didn't really threaten. I mean, they did They did have a good spell, and they did capitalise on their good spell to get that goal, as, as you mentioned there. But uh, unfortunately, if they wanted to get something out of the game, they, they, they needed to. Hold. They needed to keep the score at two-one for 
longer than they did because uh, Mönchengladbach, from my recollection, scored pretty soon their third goal pretty soon after they got the Union Berlin scored that goal. Indeed. Right. Um, on Friday, there was a game. It was Freiburg versus uh, Bayer Leverkusen. And as you know, Flo is normally with us, but he's not with us today. But we, we uh, recorded something a little bit earlier on. Have a look at this. Right, we're recording. Where's your name there? Your name's there. Right, okay, lovely. Four, three, two. How's it going, Flo? How are you getting on? I'm quite fine. The weather's sunny, so I've sit outside and uh, we won on Friday. Was a good weekend. Tomorrow's bank holiday. Could be worse. How many bank holidays do you like, have over in Germany, man? Christ, it's bank holiday every week by the looks of it. In uh, May and June, it's obviously it's like that. We have like... Uh, Three or four bank holidays in five weeks, something like that. Oh, I like One that. of the best times. And um, they've lifted lockdown a little bit more, so you'll be able to go out and have a few beers. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday they uh, le- they lose the lockdown. We can now go out with ten with a group of ten people in public, uh, and we we used it with friends. That's why I, that's why I'm a little bit wasted today <laughs> because we're, we're a couple more beers than expected. Good lad, mate. A couple more beers will sort you out. That's exactly what you need. But um, I've got I've got you in very shortly to uh, to speak about the game on on Friday night. It was Freiburg versus Bayer Leverkusen, one uh, 0 to to Bayer Leverkusen. Haberts after fifty four minutes. This game wasn't the greatest game was to watch, was it? No, nah, it wasn't. It was the, the expected tough game because Freiburg has a, has a solid defending, and uh, that's what they did. It was very difficult to win in uh, Freiburg. Actually, we couldn't win six games before over there. That that shows how difficult it is for us to win there. I'm absolutely more than happy with three points, and uh, I don't care about the game anymore. Oh, so they're a bit of a bogey team. I didn't realize how much. I know the the last couple of times you haven't had a great time there, but I didn't realize that period had gone on for so long. Yeah, usually at home uh, we beat them, and sometimes we beat them really hard. But uh, uh, in Freiburg, it's always very difficult they have a smaller pitch than everyone else and mm-hmm. uh, i don't know they with their fans with their with their home pitch they're they're very difficult to play yeah i mean like the, uh, uh, leverkusen they did dominate the game there's no denying that but it wasn't really a game of real cutting edge chances was it no and i think the better chances were for freiburg what mm. uh Hufler made before half time and uh, peterson a couple of minutes before the final whistle yeah, yeah they, uh, they could have uh, won either, maybe, if they uh, took their chance, if they used their chances. And uh, their coach, Christian Streich, I don't know if you have seen any interviews post-match, he was really mad. Yeah. And he was really, really mad at the interviewer in, in German television. He wasn't actually talking to him. He wasn't answering his questions and <laughs> was kind of funny for uh, <laughs> kind of funny to watch. Oh, dear. Well, um, you are back in fourth place as it stands at the moment. Leipzig do play on Monday night. So hopefully results go your in, in favour for you to allow you to, to stay in that top four position. But next weekend, you've got Bayern Munich. Uh, what are you, where's your head with that game? Uh, it's one of the easiest games in the season, I would say, because oh, we have nothing yeah. to lose. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we won in Munich this year in, uh, in November. So at home, we are always good. Usually against them, we, we have chances at home, way better chances than in Munich. So I I believe it will be a, a great match to watch because both teams would uh, want to play football. They want to play forward. Both teams like to have the ball. So really looking forward to that. Excellent stuff. Hey, Flo, we look forward to having you back on the show next week, Sunday. But for now, enjoy and goodbye. Thank you very much. Goodbye. See you. And welcome back. Uh, thanks for your input there, Flo. And we'll more than likely see you next week and talk some more Leverkusen as well as the rest of the Bundesliga. Anyway, back to me and Alex. And we're going to talk about Wolfsburg versus Frankfurt. Uh, Wolfsburg 1, Frankfurt Two, I wasn't expecting this result, and I'm semi annoyed about it as well. And why are you semi annoyed about that, Gal? Because I had a fourfold on, and Wolfsburg let me down. Uh, that is why. That is why. So yeah, the goals came from from an Andre Silva penalty um, and Babu header and end. But um, 
let's um let's talk about some some talking points in that. Now the penalty initially came around from Progratsic, his challenge on Silva. He got a yellow card for it and a penalty was awarded. But do you think that could have been a red card instead? Not as rugby tackled him. In my opinion. Uh I'm going to sit on the fence in this one. I don't really know. It's difficult because I don't. I, I don't. I don't think it was quite malicious enough to be a red card. Definitely a yellow card. But I don't think it's the level of maliciousness. It's that's his main no attempt to get the ball. Yeah, and that's that's uh, what that's uh, what I'm uh, thinking. It should, uh, that's why I'm thinking it should be a red card. So, but yeah, penalty was taken and silver, despite. Him not being favourable, in my opinion, as three and four <laughs> for him now. You're not, you're not, you're not a fan of him. Uh, this, this is, this is, this is starting to go a little bit like how you weren't a fan of uh, Raúl Jiménez. Yeah, he's, uh, pr- he's, he's, he's proved himself uh, <laughs> at, at Wolves, but no matter where Silva has gone, he has not been great. So it's he's going to stay in in that in that box for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it should have been one apiece. With Veghorst, he had three opportunities in one, and he just it ended up going for a corner in the end, and it was just him. I don't understand how we how we messed it up. But from the from that corner, um, Babu, uh, he, his his header made it one apiece, uh, and then Kamada, Kamada won the game with only with only five minutes to go. Uh, Baz Dost, great striker, uh, with a nod down. And it went straight into the commander's path and uh, off he went. Now, that's changed the whole dynamic of Frankfurt. Despite them getting a red card towards the end, um, substitution, uh, substitute Toro getting a yellow card, making him see Rosso. But that is now a bit of a, a boost for Frankfurt and they could get well away from that, that playoff position in the, in, in, in the Bundesliga. Yes. Um, it's kind of bought uh, Frankfurt a bit of space, isn't it? Um, from those teams below them. But, uh, yeah, Wolfsburg, it's a bit of a surprising result, this one. Even though, looking at the actual uh, table, uh, Frankfurt have actually scored more goals than Wolfsburg this season, mm-hmm. even though uh, Frankfurt are much lower in the table. However, uh, it was down. it was down to... Uh, their defence, which is where Frankfurt find themselves, which shows that they actually do have a bit of a goal threat at uh, Frankfurt. Um, They've never been f- shy in front of goal at all. And you would have thought that they would have been absolutely screwed after losing such key members of their of their forward line last season. They've, they've still found a way to score goals this year. Yes. they've uh, Despite having one of the best strikers in the world in Bastos up front. Other games on Saturday uh, involved <laughs> involved. Uh, where shall we go? We will go to the Mites Hoffenheim game. That's what we'll do. Mites nil Hoffenheim one. The winner coming from substitute Babu in the first half, and uh, Hoffenheim. They're another weird side. They're one of those sort of mid mid table teams that you don't really know whether. They want to challenge for a top position, or whether they're just happy being in the middle of the, in the middle of the table each year. What would, did, did, did what did you sort of take from Hoffenheim's performance? I've I've actually been all right with Hoffenheim since they've come back. They've actually been okay from from what I can understand, and they sit in a pretty decent position in seventh. And having lost Nagelsmann as their manager this season, or at the beginning of the season, or in the summer, I should. Say, Day, you would have expected probably them to sort of kind of drop down the table a little bit. That usually happens after such a good coach leaves a club. But uh, I feel like they've actually steadied themselves, and they, it looks like that they're now an established Bundesliga side. So I certainly, um, certainly feel like they're doing all right. To be honest with you, actually, they had a they had a free kick earlier on from Skov, and I thought it was going in. It was an absolutely beautiful strike. Uh, and it was a great save from the goalkeeper. And then uh, Baumgartner won, won Hoffenheim a penalty. 
his run, he was chopped in half by two defenders, and I think they were quite lucky to only just give give the penalty away. Zuba took the penalty. It wasn't a very good pen. No, wasn't wasn't very impressed with that. Uh, that. Which Mites, is surprising because actually I think he's not a bad player. I like I think him. He's a decent player. I, I think I, he's quite. He's one of those, you know, if he was to go to the Premier League, he would never make a top six side, but. He would. He would be. You know. He should go to somewhere like like a Palace or a Burnley or something. I'm sure he's an, inter- he's an international, isn't he? Yeah, he's an international. Yeah. So for Swit- Switzerland, Switzerland, I think. Yeah. So um, I certainly think that he's he's certainly okay. Which was a bit of a strange, strange way he took his penalty then. But yeah. You know. Mm. Even even the greats don't take penalties that uh, with regular consistency. I mean, look, Messi and Ronaldo, they're not exactly the most reliable from the spot, which is... Which is crazy for the amount of goals that yeah. they've scored. Um, yeah. Kaizen could have made it 1-0 just beforehand. He absolutely shattered the post. I couldn't believe it. I thought it was gone in. The goalkeeper had no idea. To be, to be fair, it wasn't actually that far away from him either. And it's literally smashed the post and... The goalkeeper's still looking for the ball. He's trying to work out where it is up to this moment <laughs> and he still can't find it. But then, yeah, Babu uh, took a touch. His, his touch evaded two defenders beautifully and it was a lovely finish. And bearing in mind, he'd only been on the pitch for, what, 10 minutes? Because uh, he came on for, for Brun Larsen, who was injured. Um, Mites thought that they had an equaliser this time. Uh, Anoyimi, he scored it. It was chalked off. Onuisu seemed to clatter the goalkeeper. And I think that's what we looked at initially to be like, oh yeah, fair enough. That is the reason why it's uh, it's been chalked off. But I, I think that it should have been a penalty if they weren't going to give the goal. Because the reason why he's gone into the goalkeeper is because he was pushed into it. A little bit like, if, do you remember the Arsenal Crystal Palace game uh, on this season? I think it was. Um, was it this season? Being being like June tomorrow, like I don't even know what what season's what anymore. But it was a foul on. Uh, it was a foul on on Socrates, I think it was. But then yes. it was it was Cahill who who fell over or whatever but anyway that's a, that's a different story for a different time but uh but yeah it it should have been 1-1 and i think mites will feel very aggrieved and when you are down the bottom or in and around those relegation positions things don't go your way and i feel that's exactly what happened with with mites um, mm. And then right at the end, young Max Byer is only 17 years old. I'm keeping firm eyes on him. He had two lovely opportunities, one which wasn't as good as the other, but he, one of them he, he definitely should have scored from. And I think um, once he's a little bit older and a bit more used to being in the first team fold, he will score those goals. And I, I'm sure he'll be fine. He will be fine. He'll be a, he's, a, he's a good player and I think he'll go places. Um, relative shock of the weekend, but at the same time, I'm not very shocked. Schalke nil, Werder Bremen won. So before the game, I was thinking Werder Bremen, they haven't had a very good season, but they've come off the break and they've looked okay. And I think they've been a little bit unlucky at times, but Schalke have been absolutely dog. And I'm surprised that they're even able to stay in the game at 1-0. They've lost all four games, haven't they? Mm-hmm. Um, since the resumption, and and they don't <sighs> look anywhere near winning these games either. No, they, they don't, and it's it's starting to worry as well when a player of Tadebo's supposed quality is trying to dribble out from the back, um, and gets caught on the ball, which has led to the goal by your favourite player in the whole wide world. Um, <laughs> I've got a lot of time but... for Leandro, a bit in court, mate. <laughs> I know you have. Right. <laughs> um, just, I, I I worry for Schalke. Uh, as, as Flo has alluded to previously, they've, been, they've had a lot of turmoil recently in terms of a lot of coaches coming in. It's kind of been like a, almost like they're like the Watford of the Bundesliga where they've just gone yeah. through managers like nobody's business. 
And with that means that the players who are bought in by each manager are then bought in for a specific playing style for that manager. When that manager is gone, the new ones come in and he's brought his own players in again. You just get all kinds of different philosophies and playing styles and it's just leading to, um, well, what we're seeing, basically. Mm -hmm. Nobody seems to know what they're doing. Nobody seems to have a clear plan. And they're now losing to teams who are below them in the table and on paper are worse than them. I mean, I'm looking here at the stats of the game and by all by all accounts, really, I mean, Schalke have had more shots. I mean, they've had less possession, but they've had more shots in the game. They've had almost double what Werder had, but Werder Bremen had more shots on target than more possessions, so they made it count more than Schalke did. And I think that's kind of part of their problem is they don't really look like scoring, do they? No, they really don't. And I'm very concerned about them. I'm also relatively concerned about uh, about Wagner as well. I don't think he's a very good coach, as you know. We speak, we, we've we spoken about Wagner as a coach even on last season's show when we were talking about like, Huddersfield and so far this season when we've been speaking about Schalke. There must be something which is keeping him in his job or that he's got a, a guaranteed position with this club because he has not torn up any trees whatsoever and I think he's been lucky to get results in a lot of the games the first few games of the season they looked like they were playing you know some gung-ho football and you know trying to get in their faces you know nice pressing good passing like short passes then just go bosh direct he's not showing any of that now and there it's a team that is absolutely bereft of confidence so if you can't do it, then you need to be able to get somebody in. You need to be able to get somebody in and then be able to, you know, bring that level back up. I don't know whether they need to do some team building exercises, whether they need to get a, a director of football in or something, but it's really, really not working at Schalke. No, it's not. And <laughs> looking at the table here, looking at the sort of the overall record and, They've scored the is it the third or fourth least amount of goals out of all the teams in the Bundesliga, which says it all really. They 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 are dropping fast, and they are going to be safe for this season because they're ten points clear of Dusseldorf, who are in the um in the relegation the playoff position. position in 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 the relegation playoff position. Yeah, in sixteenth place, and uh, Dusseldorf would have to pick up. Uh, over 10 points um, in the remaining five games, which is kind of Champions oh, yeah. League, form, isn't it? Yeah, I yeah. can't really so, see that happening. They've got away with it. I mean, like, if it, if it... Yeah, Schalke are safe. So they've obviously had, they had a good first half of the season. It, the break has just done them no favours at all. Oh, whatsoever. not at all. Really hasn't. But on the flip side, it's it's worked in the favour of, of Bremen. In fact, let me yes. bring the table back up again for everybody to see. Um Werder Bremen, yes, they are in 17th position still, but they've picked up a couple of wins of late and they are, you know, they're leaving Paderborn way, way behind. Yeah, and yeah. Paderborn, they're, Paderborn they're are drift now, aren't they? They're, and here's the other thing as well, that uh, Werder have gotten their favourites. They have got that game in hand as well, which if they win that game in hand, that would actually take them out of the relegation positions totally. Well, well it's funny because that game is actually against Frankfurt, who uh, even though they, they picked up a result, today they are only what five seven points clear of of bremen and only five mm -hmm. points clear of the of, of the of the relegation zone so that 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 if bremen are able to pick up a victory which i think you know they will be buoyed of confidence after the last couple of games that will take them above dusseldorf and only, in fact, that will take them above uh, above Mites as well. If they, if they, if the result goes their way, I need to double check what their what their well, head, the head, head is head on that. Yeah. yeah, but then you know, Union Berlin, they're only they're on thirty one points. It's it's getting very very the, tight at the bottom. It's strange because the break hasn't done Union Berlin any favours at all either. Because they were they looked quite safe before, at, well, as the Bundesliga resumed. But now looking at it, they've been dragged right in, especially as they 
don't think they've won a game since they've since it's come back. No, either. they haven't. They are a team that are really, really struggling without yeah. having their home support because yeah. it's it's that stadium, it's that support which which has blags them a lot of results so far this season. It's crazy. <laughs> Um, let's stay in Berlin, actually, uh, and let's talk about their 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 bitter rivals, Hertha. Hertha Berlin. They picked up a two 0 win uh, against Augsburg on Saturday. Hertha. They are a crazy team. You know, over the years, when I, since I've been following Bundesliga football, and especially since Hertha have got back into the Bundesliga top flight, they are a team where at home they look great and away they look terrible. And in the last couple of seasons they've just looked shocking at all times. So when, especially after the, the, the break that we've had, I didn't think there was going to be anything going for Berlin, but they're finding it and they're, and they're looking okay. They are. Uh, they, they've, again, it, it's strange how, <laughs> how a break for some teams ruins anything that they had going. And then for others, it just gives them, uh, a chance just to kind of reflect, refresh, and go again. And Hertha are one of those teams that have been able to do that, and they've they picked up a what so far been a rare home victory in the uh, uh, post COVID uh, nineteen football. Yeah, um, it is indeed. Um, it was. Uh, it's Del- um, Del- I can't pronounce his name properly. Dillo. Uh, yeah. Del- John. Yeah. Uh, we we'll call him John. Uh, he got. <laughs> he got the opener after twenty three minutes. Uh, he. Um, yeah. He just fired it in. Uh, after. 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 Flick, after the ball was. Uh, was flicked up to him. Boss one nil. His fourth goal of the season. Um, and the, the. The. The game. The goal that sealed the victory was from Christoph Piatek. Now, he's a player that we spoke about last week's, on last week's show, and I'm still quite surprised that he went to a side like Hertha because he was at Genoa, scored 13 in 19, went to AC Milan, second half of last season, um, scored around one in three, he's like 13 in 36 or 37 games, which isn't really a bad return. You, I would take one in three for a striker uh, at my club, as long as I've got someone else scoring goals as well, don't get me wrong. Um, but he's not really been in favour because when they spent good money on him as well, they spent like 30 million euros on him and he's been on the bench a hell of a lot. They've still been putting a lot of trust and a lot of belief into into Abisovic, who's 64 years old on, on Thursday. So the fact <laughs> that he's not able to get into the squad and they've got a, a natural goal scorer on the bench, but... You know, you sometimes you've got to wait and you've got to bide your time. And then when you do get your chance, you need to deliver. And that's exactly what Pierre Tech did. Yeah, I mean, I, t- I don't know what it says about <laughs> AC Milan or Syria in general, which you've got a player who scored some scored some decent goals, a goal return, as you mentioned there, in Syria, but can't get into what would seem to be a mid-table German team, right, in the in the in the Bundesliga, but. Yeah, he's come on, and now he's. As I say, I like to think of it as your weekly reminder that Christoph Piotek now plays in uh, Hertha Berlin rather than yes. uh, yeah. Um, and one that uh, is kind of uh, caught my eye. Really, he didn't get on, and I don't recall him playing too much. Is Reese Oxford for uh, Augsburg? He's not really. Yeah, he came the bench. off the bench last weekend, and. You know, he had that, that wonderful debut for West Ham uh, three, four seasons, four or five seasons ago now, isn't it? Uh, as a 17-year-old. And he's not really been able to... I don't know whether he's not living up to his mark or whether he's still trying to find his position because in, in that game when he made his debut, he was playing as a, as a defensive central midfielder. And he's a lot of coaches have said that he's a much better centre half so do you think he has got to go through a period of finding out what his best position is first and then hitting that I I would worry for him if if I was Reese Oxford mainly because what yeah that was four years ago five years ago I think he made his debut the same time that Dimitri Payet made his debut for West Ham and it was the same game wasn't it um, and well, he was 17 then, so what, he's going to be 21, 22 now? Yeah. Which, really, 
it's kind of it's football it's football in development really is kind of coming to an end now and if he's struggling to get into Augsburg Al- Augsburg team it's it's going to be a long career for him in the lower leagues I think I, I, I think the time has come and gone for him to really have any uh, aspirations of of playing for a top club because I'm I'm sure you, uh, you will remember he was getting linked to a a big move when Is he it, after t- that after one after game yeah <laughs> yeah it's typical typical British sporting media isn't it you know it's an English player so uh, who's very young. He has a good game, so is the next whoever. And there, are, there's a whole catalogue of players that have gone down that route of not being able to live up to the expectation. And it's not that that is not a very good player. It's just that too much has heaped upon them too soon. And I think that might have been the case for Reese Oxford. I mean, like, if you can't get into the Augsburg side as regular, if he's if he's fully fit which we're deemed to believe that he is fully fit, then, you know, maybe he isn't yeah. going to be able to make it, which is a shame, which is a shame. Yeah. And the last game uh, we'll talk about here is um, is Bayern Munich. Uh, they won five now. Anyway, guys, no, <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, no let's, let's, let's talk about that. Bayern Munich five, 14 at Dusseldorf nil. Uh, I mean, what else? What else? What else can you say? Well, there was a joke going around Fortuna, more like misfortuna. Yeah, and um, it is is a lot of misfortune there. They go. I think they are going to go down this year, uh, which is a shame because. Well, does Dorf a great night out? Yeah, if they think well, I don't know. I'll I'll bow to you on that one. Oh yeah, it's it's great. I live over there. If they can somehow cling on to the relegation, uh, the, at least the relegation playoff position, then they do give themselves a chance to stay up. They give themselves a chance. Uh, again, only I don't six know. Teams, only six teams have been able to beat the playoff team in the Bundesliga. So the yeah, Bundesliga so on, side yeah, has stayed just... up on 30, I think it's on 30 odd occasions, and only six times that, that team has been beaten. However, the second tier at the moment, is very very tight. You've got Karlsruhe there. You've got uh, you've got Hamburg knocking around. Now these are sides that are predominantly Bundesliga teams, and only exactly. only only only. Uh, I mean, at Bellefeld, I think are, are top at the moment in in the Bundesliga spy. So just before you go on there, uh, for those who are watching the show for the first time today, do you want to just quickly de- talk about, uh, describe what we're talking about when we talk about a relegation playoff? How that oh, right, OK, yeah. So I imagine that a lot of our audience will be English football fans, well, fo- well, fans of the English game, I should say. So as you are, all know, in the Premier League, the bottom three go down and in the Championship, three go up. That's the top two and then a playoff between the teams in third and sixth place. In the Bundesliga and in Germany, it's slightly different. So the bottom two from the Bundesliga go down, they get relegated at the end of the season. And the team in 16th play in the Bundesliga play against the team in third place in Bundesliga Spy or the second tier of Bundesliga football. But over, like history has shown, and history has proven that the team that do finish in 16th place in the Bundesliga when they are in a playoff against the team in third place, this is a team in the Bundesliga that end up staying up. It's very rare that the team in third place from Bundesliga Spy are able to overcome that. So that's what makes it so, so tough. And I would love to see something similar happen in the Premier League. And I think uh, me and Alex, we, we, we met up on, on, on Friday, social distanced, of course. And we, we were talking about having a, having a little chat and a bit of rant about stuff in football. And I think we're going to we're gonna do that. We're going to put that out there for you guys. But uh, it'd be very interesting to see what your thoughts are on that little rambling. Anyway, um, Dusseldorf, yes, they if, they if they do finish in that 16th place, be, due to the strength that is, in Bundesliga's fight, I can't see them being able to stay up. And it's all good to be able to cling on to that and just hope that they'll be able to stay up. But I, I, I can't see them being able to survive it. Uh, just lost Alex for, for a few I'll do whilst I've lost Alex. I will just go through uh, the fixtures of next week. 
So next week's fixtures then will be on your screen. Um, I think Alex is back now, but I'll uh, I'll go back to him in a couple of moments. So Friday night's game is Freiburg versus Munchen Gladbach. Uh, Saturday at the two thirty games, you've got Leipzig versus Paderborn, Leverkusen versus Bayern Munich, Frankfurt versus Mainz, and Dusseldorf versus Hoffenheim. Saturday night's game shows uh, Borussia Dortmund versus Hertha Berlin. Then we've got three games on Sunday. You've got Werder Bremen versus Wolfsburg, which will be a rather interesting game there. You've got uh, Union Berlin versus Schalke. So <laughs> it's not a game I'm really looking forward to, if I'm 100% honest with you. And then you've got Augsburg versus Cologne in the 5.30 and 5 o'clock game just before uh, myself, Alex and Flo uh, are back on your screens. Uh, Alex, you're welcome back. There you are. Yeah. Uh, sorry about that. I do not know what happened. I think my internet dropped out. Do briefly. not worry. Now, there's a couple of games happening uh, You've like this week. So, there's one tomorrow, isn't there? There's one, tom- one tomorrow. tomorrow. That is Cologne versus Leipzig. Uh, that is 7.30 tomorrow night or today, if you're watching the show back on Monday or listening uh, via anchor.fm forward slash tutf or on our youtube page all the games are shown live on on bt sport but um yeah i think going with the as it is anyway with most of the away teams winning i can't see anything past the leipzig victory tomorrow no uh i i agree and usually you can tell um from uh, a, a table who are the best teams and uh, when you look at the goal difference is a big indicator of that and uh, the uh, Bayern have got the best goal difference followed by Dortmund and then Leipzig have very very uh, got a similar goal difference to Dortmund even though that they're down in fifth that game that they have in hand and Leipzig win they go straight back up to third and they'll only be a couple of points behind Dortmund so I, I certainly th- feel that that's the they are the best three teams in in Germany, I think. Yeah. Um, I, I, I can't. I, I can't mean, I, I, I did. I did think that Leverkusen did threaten to uh, certainly uh, challenge Leipzig for that. I'm pretty certain I went on record as saying that I thought I saw Leverkusen and Leipzig at a very similar level. But that result against Wolfsburg for Leverkusen really did, um, really did make me ponder that because that was such a. It was so late. unexpected it, as well. It was. It was. It was not a good. Not a good performance, and but made me question Leverkusen a little bit, which is which is a shame because uh, yeah, for flow. Um, but I quite I've quite liked the way that Leverkusen have played since they come back from the break. But yeah, that was not a good result at uh, all. The other game that's happening midweek is is uh, on Wednesday night. That is also going to be live on BT Sport. You've got Werder Bremen versus Eintracht Frankfurt. That's the game in hand. That yes. uh, that will level the the playing field a little bit. Werder Bremen, I, I know home teams being at home has no advantage at the moment whatsoever. But I do feel that this will benefit Werder Bremen somewhat. Some well, I'm, I'm not quite sure why. I think it's going to be <laughs> another tight one again. Well, but I, I can see Frankfurt have been in fairly. Frankfurt have been up and down. They've won a couple, haven't they? But they've also lost. A yeah, couple, they're very, they're very, they're very up and down. It is such, a, they're such a weird side. And it is, look, you lose, you lose Rebic, you lose Jovic, you lose Haller. You can't be expected to be up there doing doing bits yeah. at the top of the table when you lose. Not Your best just, player. Yeah, not just one best player, but they're three key players from last season. You know, they're all gone. So what? You know, the fact that they are loitering around doing what they're doing, I think, is actually quite impressive. I was going to get the tail back up again. We are referring a lot to the table. That's the fixtures for next week. Um, the table. So, Frankfurt are in 12th position, as I said. Like, they can get dragged back into it. But a victory there will... with, with if, if they do win with only five games to go, I, I would say that they'll be safe on 35 points uh, with, with Dusseldorf being on 20, 27. That's eight points between, uh, in five games to try and overturn. I think that's going to be a little bit too much. Really do. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, I think it's... I think it'll be very interesting, but the game of the week next week has to be uh, Leverkusen versus Bayern Munich. Ah, so you've gone with Leverkusen and Bayern Munich. We uh, 
we looked at uh, the Dortmund um, game. We oh, Dortmund Hertha. Yeah, we thought that was going to be a bit of a, uh, um, a, 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 especially from more a competitive standpoint. We thought that would be a lot closer because, again, even though we we do like a Leverkusen, I think Bayern Munich are probably still quite too strong for them. Um, whereas Hertha, as we've already discussed in the show already, have come into uh, this break in very good form, and and Dortmund. If Haaland is not back, even though they scored six today, I would still question about uh, that was more down to the quality of opposition rather than Dortmund's uh, superior play, whatever you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, I think I think Lucio Favre would have had a had a serious word at half time in, in, in that game did. because well, yeah, that is an awful thing. abysmal performance in the first half of the um, team that's meant to be challenging Bayern Munich for a title. I don't, I don't I'd well, and yeah, you, I don't know if you caught the the comments as well during the game that they there has been some murmurings in Germany that uh, Nico Kovac is in the wings waiting for uh, for for the for the Dortmund post. Which why would, you, I why would anyone if, want him? If I, don't I was a Dortmund, well, it, 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 as I say, if I was a Dortmund fan, that would have sent the uh, Willy straight up me because I'd have that would send me in a in a cold sweat, waking up from a nightmare, a nightmare. You you sim- you had simile to uh, when uh, he was linked with the Arsenal. Oh, job. I, I had a right. I, I was a genuine nightmare. I literally need to find that text and that message. <laughs> when, it, when it came out, I was like, oh my god, I literally had this. Um, but Paderborn <laughs> did actually. They they only lost three two to Bayern Munich. Oh, yeah, which is and right. they they gave him a bit of a Again. game. That was Nico Kovac in charge, wasn't it? Was that game under yeah, his shield? It was, and they had fans I mean, there as well. So. We're we're, ta- we're taking massive shots at Nico Kovac, but he didn't. For me, he goes in the Unai Emery kind of manager group, if you want to call it. Mm. As in, he does well at smaller clubs, but when he goes to a club with who are expected to win, he still brings along that small club man- small club mentality, which those players at that bigger club kind of like don't don't relate to, do they? Yeah, so, I agree. Um, well, you guys have been watching uh, to up top uh, the Bundesliga review of game day 29 with myself, Gav Mack and Alex Osborne. Make sure you tune in on Thursdays as well, because on Thursdays, you do our top five. So, you know, if you go on our YouTube channel, um, I would put the YouTube link back up again underneath so everyone can see. And if you're listening, YouTube, uh, if you're listening to the show via anchor.fm forward slash T-U-T-F, that's two up top football. You'll be able to click the link above. You got the you can click the Facebook, the Instagram, the Twitter, the YouTube, all above your play bar. So you'll be able to have a look and see what we do and, and what we look like as well. I think um, we're way too we're way too handsome to be heard. Uh, we need to be seen, in my opinion. <laughs> and once the barbershops are open again, Jesus Christ, you won't see me in a snapback for a long, long time. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, um, make sure you follow, like, share, subscribe to all our bits and bobs all over social media. As I said, it's myself, Gav Mack and Alex Hogsborn. Thank you and good night.